on the CEO's chair, we invite global leaders that bring their own unique perspective to the show. For today's show, we have with us a serial entrepreneur and investor, a Guinness World Record holder, as well as a luxury business owner. She's been invited on multiple occasions by BBC News as well as BBC Radio to share her experiences and her insights on small businesses in the UK. Welcome to the CEO's chair, Darshana. Thank you, Siddharth. It's a pleasure to be here. So, Darshana, Verve Rally sounds like a really interesting concept. Please tell us a little bit more about it. Well, Verve means enthusiasm. And True. Rally is a bunch of cars that come together. And uh, the whole concept is GT supercar experiences. You take them uh, on the finest roads and for a spectacular adventure. So, say if your dream was to drive a Ferrari in the south of France, and uh, you wanted to do this with uh, your partner or a friend, we can create those experiences for you. You can bring your car or you can hire one, whether it's a Ferrari, Lamborghini, Aston Martin, but they have to be a certain kind of cars. They all go together. So it's a fun experience. So we bring a lot of things together to create True. an experience, which is like a bucket list experience for people. And there is a trend in the market where things are moving from people buying things to owning more experiences because the experiences stay with you for life. Absolutely. So that's what we and, are looking And speaking at. of experiences, you've, you've held uh, many roles in your life. You've had many hats on. You've been a radio jockey. You've worked in events. Uh, you've been CEOs of multiple companies. At what point in your life did you decide that you wanted to become your own boss and your own CEO? Well, it's been a great journey, I must say. It's all started with, you know, the first job where you're learning your skills. You don't even know what you really like. True. And in your 20s, I, I took on a lot of new roles and a new, and I tested from customer service to being talent on radio. Of I was a radio jockey with Radio Mirchi. I loved it. I got paid <laughs> to talk. That was easy. From there, I took on business development roles and, and, and learned my way up on how to create and structure deals. And eventually, there comes a point in time in your life when you have to invest into yourself. Absolutely. Because nobody else will. True. And this came into, for my pull towards entrepreneurship was actually when I was moving to the UK. I had to move to the UK for personal reasons. Okay. And at that point, I had two choices, either to apply for a job in an economy back in 2011, which was not that great True. in the UK, or to go and contribute and create jobs. So I took the path of an entrepreneur visa. Okay. And uh, I was one of the few people who got granted a visa back in 2011 to set up a business. I had a business plan to give to the government. I had to show them how many people I was going to employ. Looking back, it was probably the most daring thing I'd ever done <laughs> in my life. There have been a lot of challenges, I must say. But challenges is also an opportunity for you to turn them around. And from that comes huge success. True. So the bigger the problem, the bigger the solution, and the bigger the reward. Of course. So you, you touched upon being a woman CEO. Yes, um, that came with its own challenges where it's more about the environment. It's not how people perceive what your capability is. I feel as a woman, sometimes you have to prove that first and then they follow. Um, whereas with a man, it's assumed. But however, this is changing. Um, It's very interesting what you say, becoming your, your own boss. What I realized is um, when I had bosses before, I managed them really well Okay. because I was always a self-starter. I, I also worked very well with people who let me do the job, told me what the job was, let me do it. If I needed help, I would say, okay, I need your help. But otherwise, I'd, I'd continue. When I started my own business, I thought I was my own boss. <laughs> <laughs> but really, your customers, your clients, they're your bosses in many True. ways. You have multiple people to keep happy. Even your, or even your staff. You need to make sure they're motivated, they're inspired. So the first few years of a business, it was a very humbling thing. Yes, there was flexibility that came in after. Once the businesses are set, that's when you see the flexibility come in. That's when you see 
you know you're more in charge of of your destiny and you can take it forward but initial time it is it is quite a contrast uh, and sometimes you can be the worst boss to yourself but in a, <laughs> and and i think that's so important that in a society where we're getting more and more guarded uh, people are very careful about who they're spending their time with uh, that it's almost like uh, you know a comfort zone that you've created where people can come and let their guard down and essentially be their own authentic self absolutely you no. hit that on the nail <laughs> <laughs> that's that, that's that's really nice to hear the best car i've driven on a rally is the lamborghini gallardo I guess because of my size, it it fits really well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of people have a lot of trouble getting in, but I know I've heard some people who might be probably, um, you know, um, from more the taller spectrum, who feel that it may may not be comfortable. But True. for myself, uh, it was so comfortable. It was the easiest car for me to drive. Very nice. um, I like the convertible Spider, so that was good. um in the future i guess uh, the next car i want to trial on the rally would be a um, mclaren okay so mclaren 720 uh, we do have car hire packages and uh, one of the perks of the job is that i can take a car out you can test them out time. multiple exactly. times <laughs> it's, it's no that's amazing job, i'd love to be a part of a rally uh, <laughs> someday Uh, a sales process normally takes about it it's all about touch points and okay. depending on what deal it is it might be anything between 9 to 20 touch points wow. or even third okay. so you have to break down every process and every business have held there has been a sales and business development element to it and first it's about understanding your product okay what is so unique about your product why should they why should anyone buy your product understanding what's in it for them the other person and breaking that journey down saying okay so how many meetings is it going to take how many calls is it going to take whether it's yourself making it your team making it explaining the journey to your team within so they understand where the client is at okay also one of the key things is a lot of people go to a deal um, or go to a meeting for a deal expecting instant results true for me i work it backward i look at how can i help this person If I can't help this person there is no way or there isn't I don't want to ask for help back okay. because it is a one way deal doesn't work it's not sustainable and eventually it's going to crack so the long term value is very very important so when I walk into a meeting if I have asked for the meeting I think about at least three ways I can help the other person so you you try and provide value first before you ask for yes. something back yes. okay that's interesting and then I ask for one thing back and why three is because You never know what the person wants so you might come up with saying oh we can help you this way and the person's like but that's not my focus then you have thought of some other things So when I was 27 I was given an opportunity to be a general manager and that came because of the work I had done before that of course in a short amount of time there was a company i was a part of and i had added value to the existing systems i had increased their profitability and they felt that it would be good for me to general manage the business and in that business we had staff which some of it was a lot of them are 40 year old and that was at that point it felt like a challenge because sure. here i am in my late 20s i was 27 and i have somebody who's at 47 who has been with the company for 10 years and is now looking at why should i learn from you so my focus on in, was on being very good at what i did okay and and for that working hard taking guidance from people who had been there on that path at the same time when i accepted the role i did it on two accounts i knew that opportunity knocks rarely and when it does you must be at the right place at the right time to pick it up so i was like yes i'll do this the second one was i knew that what i was not good at okay so i knew that when it comes to cash flow finance systems i hadn't had enough experience in it to be good at it so i was very honest with the people who own the business to say listen i'm happy to take on this role however i need some guidance in this so give me somebody who's good at it who can help me be my right hand person or left hand person in this role and they did and that role i took the business from four parts of the world to seven parts of the world 
grew it multiple folds. And um, I was there almost four years. And if it wasn't for my move to going into the UK and starting a business, True. I would have probably been in that business even now, growing and constantly striving to excel and getting the team to come together to push their boundaries too. I have been so lucky. Uh, I worked in Singapore okay. and I worked in UK. Not once have I felt that being an Indian has been a negative thing. UK, contrary to what people in this country feel sometimes, Correct. has moved on. The new generation is open and accepting. They look at you for who you are. So I've never ever felt biased for being hear. Indian. In fact, I've been proud of our country. Uh, so yeah, I've been very, I've been very lucky. So I haven't felt it so much because of my being Indian. I have felt it sometimes being uh, a woman. And also, if I put myself into a other person's perspective or shoes, um, sometimes uh, being petite makes you look younger, or maybe it's my chubby cheeks. I don't know what it is. <laughs> But it does ruffle a few feathers when people say, oh, how, how is this person? It doesn't kind of commute, compute. There is a certain way uh, people have to look to be doing a certain of kind of things. But we are now in a, we are part of times where everything is being challenged. People are pushing boundaries. And yes, being a female in motorsport from uh, a country which is probably not as much into motorsport um, has not really uh, is not your conventional thing, but True. at the same time, when people see you and see your product and see what you've presented, there isn't that bias anymore. That's great to hear. It's all about letting the, your work speak for itself, right? Absolutely. A lot of people and a lot of youngsters that are getting into entrepreneurship today uh, think of it as a very rosy picture. I mean, it's not all supercars on Instagram, is it? There's no. a lot that goes behind the scenes that nobody else yeah. sees. Even if it is supercars on Instagram, there's a lot that goes <laughs> behind the there's scenes. There's a lot that goes behind. Um, you've yes. run multiple successful businesses in different continents. Um, what is it, uh, according to you, that is the one critical factor that a business must have to survive and thrive in a ever-changing economy? The one critical factor for me is a hot product okay. that the clients need okay. or desire. So it has to be a deed based where it is essential or it has to be something that is super desirable. Because in this world of choice, of where customers have so many things they can pick from, you have to stand out. So essentially, what is that X factor that you need or the, the differentiator that you need to have? Absolutely. Regardless of whether yeah. it's a product or a service. Your, yeah, your product or a service, it has to be hot, it has to be cool, it has to be um, something super attractive for the clients. Absolutely. Darshana, it's, it's been a pleasure having you on the CEO's chair. We have a lot of youngsters that are out there watching that would love to be in your shoes one day. What is a, a, a lasting message that you'd like to leave for them? Think about where you want to see your life going. And don't worry so much about how things will pan out. Don't be in a rush to get there. Learn in your 20s, upskill yourself, learn from others, because as you grow older, lesser people are going to invest in that. Um, so learn with enthusiasm. And then whatever you do, do a great job at it. It's all about really doing the best you can do and being the best person you can be in every situation. And you will see that habit translates into excellence and excellence is what gets success. Great. Perfect words to end the, the show. Thank you so much, Darshana. Uh, wish you and uh, Verve all the best. Thank you. And uh, all of you watching, um, like Darshana said, work hard. Uh, there's nothing wrong with finding a mentor, being authentic and just essentially try and be the best that you can be because uh, if you don't invest in yourself, uh, essentially you're never going to be able to invest in your brand or anything else that you do. So uh, continue watching the CEO's chair and look forward to seeing you all next time. Thank you.